Kiara, and welcome to another episode of uh, Influencers at LU, a video podcast series brought to you by Lincoln University's Faculty of Agribusiness and Commerce, with me, your host, Hafsa Ahmed. Today, uh, we've got Dan Smith as my guest. He is a lecturer in farm management in the Department of Agricultural Management. So welcome, Dan. Hi. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself? Uh, sure, yeah, so I'm agribusiness lecturer here at Lincoln. Um, I lecture aqua- across quite a lot of papers. I have quite a lot of my own papers and I do guest lecturers into quite a lot of other lectures. So um, I sort of have a reasonable breadth across this uh, faculty. Um, I have a bit of a different path to this role um, as opposed to the majority of academics. So um, grew up in a country town, had a big family contracting business. Um, till early 20s and then I went overseas for a few years and then I came back um, in my mid-20s and came to Lincoln at that age. I did a dip ag, dip farm management, BCom ag and master of applied science and then I went out and worked for Ravensdown for four or five years, FERT rep consultant slash um, and then I went to the ANZ bank uh, four or five years and sort of became quite a senior banker and then came back to Lincoln to um, teach the next generation um, a couple of years ago. Mm. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, So today we've called our topic as addressing mental health at Lincoln University. So Dan, why are you interested in rural mental health? Um, Well, I've been thinking about this quite a bit and I think I can probably put it down to four reasons. So the main reason is um, because of this industry that we're all in, agriculture. So, um, and I know in other industries and your tourism and hospitality and airlines and so on, everyone has stresses. But in our particular industry in agriculture, there's quite a lot of things to cause mental stress. You know, your seasonality and the milk price and weather and climate and all of these things going on. A lot of it's outside of your control. Uh, the markets and prices, production, it's all biological systems. Um, But I think the main thing we have in our industry is isolation. Um, Of all of the industries, we probably have the most chronic isolation. Um, So it's quite risky for mental health. I think isolation and mental health risks go hand in hand. Um, So that's one reason I'm interested in it. Another reason I'm interested in it is, um, like I said before, when I came to Lincoln, I did pretty much every paper at Lincoln. um, And I thought that I had been taught everything that I might come across when I go out there into the industry. And so out I went working for Ravensdown. Um, Once you get to know what you're doing, you probably have less and less involvement with the farmer sometimes, like you could manage yourself for a week. Um, And in doing that, it sort of became quite a lonely job and I sort of found myself isolated in the agricultural industry and, and battling with that a bit. And I thought I was weird. No one had ever explained to me that this might happen, that this is a thing. Um, Or I was weak, so you can't go and talk to people about how weak you are. Like, why do you feel lonely? That's pretty weak. You know, that was Mm. perhaps the mindset at that time. So um, ever since then, I've sort of had an interest in all things mental health because I sort of went there for a bit um, when I was younger. Um, The other reason is, is that, that my students who... I sort of feel fatherly towards and who I care about, I'm sending them out into this industry and and, um, potentially some of them will follow the same path I followed. So um, I'm sort of interested or I'm sort of caring in that regard about, um, you know, you're all here and young and happy and I'm um, sending you out into this industry where you may end up isolated and battling. So um, I really care about it from that perspective. Uh, and then the other reason that mental health and mental fortitude interests me is in my spare time, I do a lot of adventure racing, uh, even national level adventure racing or kayak races or mountain marathons or multi-sport races. Um, and that requires a lot of mental fortitude. You know, you're 90 Ks deep into a race and you've been extremely hungry and extremely cold, extremely tired, extremely hot, blood coming from places you didn't know you could bleed from. Uh, you wanted to quit five hours ago and you've still got three hours to go. Um, And so you need mental fortitude to get through that. So um, that sort of makes me even more interested in all things mental, if that makes sense. Um, And then in doing that, I can promote these activities via whatever social media or whatever pages. Mm -hmm. And I think that A, it allows me to show people that if a guy like me, an ordinary guy like me can go out and do these things, then, you know, maybe they can 
do mm. things like that as well. And it also allows me to promote Farm Strong and the Resilient Farmer. So mm. it sort of circles back to helping that ag industry, I hope. And um, everyone's different, but for many people, exercise and adventure and challenge is a good way out of uh, some of these struggles they might find themselves in. Mm. So yeah, it's the industry, it's the students, it's my adventure racing um, and my own experience. Mm. So th those are really, um, r really key insights into why you've chosen to focus on this area. And there's certainly so much talk about the idea of mental health in the rural mm. sector. So when you talked about your students, I know you said quite passionately that you feel fatherly about, you know, sending them out into this industry. So what do you do with your students around rural mental health? Um, I just talk about it. I normally wait until the second semester, um, even well into the second semester. It's closer to them going out there. Mm. Um, and I think that in that time they've got to know me, you know, and I'm not a stranger, or I'm not an ad on TV, I'm this real guy that they know. Mm. And I'll normally just pull up a desk and sit on a desk in the front of the classroom and just talk about, you know, and I normally say to them, look, I told you on the first lecture of the year that I will expose you to everything you might come across in the agricultural industry. And I mean, we've talked to you other lecturers how to spot foot rot, how to spot rust, how to spot, you know, certain weeds. I really need to talk to you about mental health issues that that occur in this industry or that may occur. So, um, and I don't have a slideshow or anything. I just sit there and talk to them about it, sometimes for an hour, sometimes for two hours. I normally explain um, that I've been there, you know, and they may think I'm like a mentally strong guy that this would never happen to. So, I think A, I'm talking to them about it, and B, I'm telling them that it can even happen to me. I think that they can connect with that quite well. Um, I talk about suicide with them as well. I think um, I don't beat around the bush. Um, you know, everybody can help you with mental health issues, but once you go down the suicide road, not many people can help you come back from that. So I make sure I address it in those terms, which um, hits home a lot more. I talk about the path to isolation. Um, and I say that you, you know, especially now when they're partying every night and they're living in a flat of nine people and this is the furthest thing from their mind and then off they go to a management role or taking over the family farm, financial pressure comes on, workload comes on, oh, I might not play rugby this season, I'm too busy, I might stop going to the young farmers, I'm too busy, I might not go to that field day, I might not go on that piss trip or whatever and next thing they know they're just isolated on this farm, you know, and they might mm. be in the yards one day and think, geez, I haven't spoken to another person for three weeks. So it's quite easy to end up, you know, down that path of isolation. I actually had a student come in recently. He'd been three weeks out of uni and he was starting to realise how lonely his job is. Um, so I talk about that. I cover all of that. I make sure I address the females in the room. So, I mean, anybody knows that we've had 10, 15, 20 years of your Mike Kings and John Kerwins and so on addressing men. It's okay for a man not to be okay. It's okay for a man to ask for help and so on. But you don't see a lot of talk around women's mental health. Um, and the females in the room need to realize they are also at risk. So um, I've just got to be careful with stats. But a rural woman is about twice as likely um, as the general population to end up in one of these situations. Um, and typically, I mean, it's modern times, but traditionally the the lady of the relationship can be a lot more of the financial stress. So husband's out there, he's just worried about, you know, getting a new tractor or getting heavier lambs or whatever. Sometimes the wife feels isolated that only her has the financial stress. So I make sure that I address the ladies in the room and tell them um, that it's okay. Um, and that, you know, it's, it's not just a man issue that, A, it's not just a thing men can get, and B, it's not just a thing men can talk about. Um, and then all I really try to do is I've got these four things that I want them to know. Um, and we sort of draw it on the board or we talk about it or we look it up and we look up pages on the internet. But really it's the first part is here are the mental health issues that you may encounter. It's okay to have any one of them. Um, you might have some of one and some of the other or a mix or just one or none. Um, but these are the uh, mental health issues that can occur. Uh, it's okay if this happens to you or your staff. The second one that we talk about is how would you spot that in yourself? So, I mean, you might just think you're having a bad day or you're tired or you're sore or there may be something bigger at play or uh, maybe the environment that you're in is causing this. So how do you spot that in yourself? The third bit is how do you spot it in other people? 
So in your staff, in your spouse, in your parents, um, and whoever else, even the rep that comes to see you. Like um, when I was a rep going to visit farmers, sometimes I was having a terrible time driving up the farmer's drive and then put a facade on to talk to the farmer and then leave again. So can you spot that? And then the fourth thing we talk about, um, which we do in a group is what are the options? So if you've um, got it or spotted it in someone else or spotted it in yourself, what can we do about this? What are the different avenues? Who can we ring? Who can we talk to? What can we do? Um, what can we get people to help us with? So it's really just that, and it's just normalizing it a bit, I think. Um, I wrote a few notes. I don't think there was anything else I was going to say about that. Um, mm. Yeah, just that. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it, it is a very important topic, isn't it? Because there mm. is a lot of uh, stigma attached with discussing mental health, and mm. and it's good to know that you you talk about it from you know, and and there is a lot of talk already in you know, and you see a lot of ads out there with the John Kirvins and the mm. Mike Kings, like mm. you said, rightly said, and it's good to um, and I think there is a lot that the students can take away because that is really some one of the most important discussion you can have with them before they head out in there. Yeah. So um, what are the outcomes that you've seen so far having done this? Um, some of the most rewarding outcomes is when people ring me. So that fourth thing, when we talk about all the different things you can do and we look up the FarmStrong website, the Resilient Farmer website, there's Anxiety New Zealand, there's all these different numbers they can ring, but I also give them my personal details and say, look, I've, I'm already someone you're comfortable with. I've already, we've already had this discussion ring me and um, so a few people have rang me which is very rewarding or a few people have emailed me or Facebooked me some stranger rang me and said um, my friend said that you were his teacher and he thought maybe I could ring you so that was probably um, the most rewarding thing like um, but it's just normalizing a bit manning up a bit or um, hopefully in the absence of me there's someone out there that said to their mate hey you're right, or you know, you should start coming to blah. I think I think you've been on your own too much, and so hopefully they talk to each other. Hopefully they have reached out to Farm Strong or the Resilient Farmer, or at least paid a bit more attention, or at least made a donation to these sort of places. Um, but yeah, just to normalise it. But the most rewarding part for me is if somebody rings me, and I always say to my students, "How good would you feel if someone approached you with this issue? Like, be that guy." Uh, instead of the guy that no one would ever come to and talk about. So again, I wrote a few notes. Um, I'm pretty sure I said everything that I was going to say. Yeah. Um, I want people to know that it's a challenge that there's a way out of. Mm. Like I say, once they hit the suicide, there's no way back. But everything else, there's a way out of it. And whether it's exercise or whether it's talking to people or changing your environment or changing jobs or career or your friend circle or whatever, um, it's just making people aware that there's there's ways out of it and um, you're not the only one is sort of the, the outcomes I want as, as long as they understand that. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, and it, and it is definitely a shift in the culture that comes along mm. with the rural environment, isn't it? Mm. So what would you like to see happen in the future in regards to the university and, you know, well-being um, from this perspective? So we've got a bit of a project in place at the moment. I thought I'd done enough. And then a colleague said to me, what if you disappeared tomorrow? What have you actually changed? And the answer actually is nothing because I don't even have a set of slides to hand on to the next person and maybe the next person wouldn't be comfortable. But actually we've got a project, I think you talked to Nick Prince recently. So he's another very caring lecturer. So between the two of us and LUSA and Student Health, and Pegasus Health, we've got a bit of a project going. Um, we're quite keen to embed this a bit more into our teachings. Mm. Um, and like times change, you know, we, we, we talk about health and safety in our assignments and we talk about environmental compliance. We talk about um, climate change and these sort of things. Then we probably should, you know, this is just as big as all of those things in a changing mm. world. So we're looking at how can we embedded a bit more into our course learning so uh, me and Nick are actually going to go on a course um, for a few days which obviously not going to make us um, therapists in two days but it's just going to give us uh, some more skills around talking about this stuff and then at least we can talk to our students so I engage with uh, a large majority of the students here so does Nick um, so we can have lectures with a bit more structure and a bit more you know meat behind them 
Um, mm. And then if that goes well, we may go and do guest lectures into other papers and make sure that we do hit every student that's going to end up in the ag industry. Um, so we've sort of got that project going um, and things like this. Mm. So maybe someone out there may be in this position and they might watch this and think, I'll give that guy a call. Or, you yeah. know, um, it's just good for the industry to know that Lincoln University is saying, here are all the things that are happening in the industry. The industry always changes and we are willing to change our, you know, what we teach to meet that demand. So, I mean, we mm. sort of have the freedom to do that. We've got a supportive dean, a supportive head of department. Um, and if we think that uh, the shape that we're trying to um, align our um, students for the industry isn't quite right, it needs to be adjusted because this is what the industry looks like, then we can just do that. So mm. um, that's sort of what we're doing. We're just sort of embedding this so that when agricultural graduates leave Lincoln, they at least, it's not some weird thing. When I encountered this in the field, I, I'd never encountered it. I'd never heard of Farmstrong. I didn't know this was an issue. I didn't know isolation caused depression. I didn't know any of that. Mm. Um, and I didn't, and I was too scared to say anything to anybody. So, um, yeah, luckily I found my own way out. But I would like to think that um, Lincoln can sort of just do a bit more uh, to prepare people. Yeah, and I think yeah. certainly that we are heading in the right direction with with mm. you and Nick uh, sort of heading in that space with with uh, with a project with some experts, which you know Pegasus help being involved mm. is a really good thing to have on your side. So thank you very much, Dan. I think I really appreciate your time. Yeah. And this gives us a bit of insight into the, uh, you know, the great work that you guys are doing in the, in the mental health space. And if, if, uh, to, the, to the listeners who, are, um, who would like to connect with Dan, his details are available on Lincoln University's staff profile. So you can just search for Dan Smith and you'll get his contact number and his email. And if you want to comment back and give me some feedback about this podcast series you can do that by emailing me at hafsa.am at lincoln.ac.nz or message me on linkedin thank you so much dan cheers thank you lovely to talk to you thanks